PvPing as a new player can be pretty scary, especially when you hear the stories of the 8.4 boogeymans on the hunt for 4.1 players. I totally understand. It's kind of it's kind of annoying, and you sometimes feel the need to go and buy yourself an 8.4 set. Except that you cannot afford that. But my friend, you don't need to afford that to be able to PvP. Let me show you a set that's on the polar opposite, a 150k set that I've used to make some 8.3s run for their lives. Check it out. Boys, the build that you want to be using goes like this. Guardian Helmet, third spell, first passive. Cleric Robe, third spell, first passive. You could also replace this with Mage Robe, but I prefer Cleric Robe so I can fight a tougher opponents. A soldier Boots with a third spell, second passive. A Shield as an offhand. You want to have Beef Stew for food and you want to have a cape at least a normal cape the reason i didn't go with a cape is because i want to take advantage of a strategy that i'm also going to teach you how to take advantage of which is called ip baiting if you want to have a cape i would recommend matro cape with this or Tedford cape that could also work or just a plain or normal cape the best one would be matlock the second best Tedford, and the worst normal cape and i guess the absolute worst no cape but there is a reason i actually went without the cape i will explain in a second you want to have a grandmaster curse staff or whatever curse staff you can afford having as high the higher the better you want to have the first Q, second W as a default, you might want to swap to this W sometimes or to this W sometimes. I'm going to explain when and why. And the last passive, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. To be honest, the first passive might be just as good. But because this build kind of lacks mobility, I kind of prefer to have it on this just for the sake of that 20% extra movement speed, even though it's just for 3 seconds. The build is one of the most straightforward builds you've ever seen. You just want to Q your enemy, the Q does damage and applies a dot a dot that stacks up to four times now once you stack this dot up to four times your e is going to do more damage based on the amount of stacks starting from 540 at zero q stacks and going all the way up to 1.8k at four stacks you can already see how this is coming along so the Q applies those stacks, the E consumes the stacks. And consume is a very important word when it comes to this. You are going to consume your stacks. The stacks are not going to be left there after you use your E. So use that with caution. The W, it looks like this. And it roots the enemy into place. It just roots them. It doesn't stun them. So keep that in mind. It deals some damage and it applies a vile curse. Oh no, it actually just applies a vile curse. I thought it also deals damage. Uh, so basically you have this and this, which apply Vile Curse Charges. The Vile Curse Charges are going to be consumed by your E. Let me explain the rest of the build. You want to have Cleric Robe with the Everlasting Spirit. This activates a word on you, that word right there. If you get hit while that word is on you, which happens for 1.5 seconds, you will become immune to damage for, for 3 seconds, right? It was for 4, so for 3 seconds. And on top of that, you're getting a damage boost for 20%. Uh, for 20 so you're getting 20% more damage and you are immune to everything. This is very helpful against other curse staffs and very helpful in general against builds that do a lot of dot damage. This removes all the dots and it applies a shield on you. This shield gets bigger depending on how low you are. If you are at full HP or above 40%, the shield is going to be 536 hit points. If you are below 40%, you're going to have double that, 1073, almost double that. So uh, keep that in mind and try to use this at the last moment, especially if you're finding a build that heavily relies on stacks. If you're finding like a curse tab, for example, it's a very good idea to use this right before their E assume uh, i'm assuming the their e will be at full stacks right before that pops you want to activate this to not only remove their stacks but also shield yourself through the e so you want to keep that in mind and you want to have this f which makes you move really really fast like just look at this but it ramps up slowly 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 you are very vulnerable initially to purges but after you get going and after you get like uh, five stacks you just gone uh, the stack that I'm talking about is something that gets applied to you every one second. Basically, every second, your movement speed gets increased by 10%. And this lasts for 7 seconds. Overall, you can have 80% movement speed because a stack is also applied to you instantaneously. So, uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Here's the swaps that you might want to have. This is the default. This is what you want to use against um, runners, against melee players and stuff like that. Now, if you have a fighter... Even though it's a melee player, it's a very good idea to swap to this, especially if they have a higher IP than you. If you have a Kaira that's also a fighter, it's a very good idea to swap to this. This, 
Let me explain each one by one. This ability makes it so you buff yourself and the longer you delay your auto attacks, the more damage you're going to do. So for example, if I buff myself and I start auto attacking like this, I'm not going to deal very like a lot of damage. But if I delay my auto attacks and I let this ramp up, this right here, look at that. 322 damage in one auto attack on top of the normal auto attack damage that I do. This is incredibly good for lowering people and you're going to see how I almost killed people that had like even... 500 more IP than me with this. Like, it's insane how strong curse staffs are right now. Then Armor Piercer. Armor Piercer is a skill shot, meaning that you're going to have to aim it and actually try to hit it. It looks like this. It has an insanely long range, and it, the, on top of dealing damage, it also reduces the enemy damage resistances by, 50, uh, by 51. The way you want to use this is basically you just stack your target like you normally do, you try to pop to put your E on them, and right before this pops, you lower the resistances. You want to do that right before it pops. I mean, not you don't have to time it perfectly because you have a, a lot of room for error. But this lasts for four seconds. The debuff itself lasts for four seconds. The E itself pops after five seconds. So you want to make sure that you actually use the E first, then the W, so that the W doesn't run out. At the same time, it's not a bad idea to use it early, because then the enemy is going to take some extra damage thanks to the curse Staff Qs. And the Poison, you want to throw it again right before the E pops, for the same reason you use this. You're basically just lowering the enemy resistance by a ton. This is 81 resistance reduction, which is huge. That's about it when it comes to the build. Some possible upgrades that you could have. You could have Demon Boots, so that's gonna be more of a fighter type of uh, build. You could have Matro Cape, that would be the meta. I wanted to go without a cape, so I lower my IP. And right before I show you how this build goes, actually, let me explain why I wanted to lower my IP. Like, don't you normally want to have high IP? Well, not always. With this build, I feel like the best way to play it is by doing something called IP baiting. What does that mean? Somebody looks at me and sees that my average IP is 1026. If they have 1200, they're going to look at me and they're going to think, hi, I can kill this guy easily. And truth be told, that happened plenty of times. That happened plenty of times. People with higher IP than me that thought they could kill me. Why couldn't they kill me? Because that's not actually my IP. I mean, my overall IP, yeah, that's it. But the IP responsible with damage, it's actually much higher than that. Not a lot of people know this, but the weapon is responsible for damage. And I know this is the obvious part, but what I'm trying to say is that this IP establishes how much damage you make, how much damage you do, how much damage you can deal out. Like, obviously, people know the weapon is responsible for damage, but they think the damage is calculated based on average IP. That is not true. The damage is calculated, and again, I don't know this, I learned this very, very uh, recently. The damage is calculated based on the weapon IP. This average is just so that you know what's the average thing that you can expect from this person. So my my damage itself is the damage of a person who has 1.3k IP. And that's why even though everything is tier 6 equivalent, my weapon is tier 7 equivalent. Uh, it would be a good idea to even bring, I would say, tier 4. 4.1. Just so you have like tier 4.1 and tier 8, let's say. If you have... Tier 8, uh, tier 4.1 as for gear and tier 8 as for weapon, you're gonna deal tier 8 damage, but you're gonna have tier 4.1 HP. You're gonna have tier 4.1 energy. You're gonna have tier 4.1 resistance. Your stats are determined based on what you wear. This stat is responsible to your damage. The other stats are responsible with other things. So as long as you have the damage, you should be able to kill people, but keep in mind you will be squishy. And now I think you realize why I wanted to include two shields and I guess, uh, I, I guess I can say three shields in this build because you will need them. You will be very squishy, but man, are you a glass cannon. Check it out. See for yourself. Perfect. Perfect. We get a fight. Let's go! Let's go! 360k, boys!
He dead, boys? He's a dead boy, boys? Boom! What? 51 HP! Let's run for him. You get over him. Where's the 8.4? Here. Here it is. I'm dismounted, man. Get yourself over here. Get yourself over here. Come on, why? He doesn't want to fight? Bro, there is no way on the face of the planet you don't want to fight me unless I'm attacked by mobs. I refuse to... I, I would like to believe that you didn't see me. There is no way... Okay, perfect. He didn't see me. Look at this build. Look at what this build can do to a sweat lord. You make them run. Look at what I'm using. You make them run. This is what this build can do against sweat lords. He attacked me. He ran. He ran, boys. Ran. <laughs> look at this. Just look at this. Imagine keep a cape. Imagine Ted Foot cape. Imagine a cape. Like, honestly, imagine a cape. Imagine a cape. If you don't panic and you play your cards right, you can do this with this. He had 700 more IP than me. He had 700 more IP than me. And you know why he ran? Because he would have died over there. He would have legit died over there. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown. We decided to finally launch Patreon after seeing so many people willing to help us out. So if you want to help us out, if you want to support our content, please consider joining our Patreons by accessing the link in the description down below. It truly helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We love y'all.